Hi, my name is Kevin Mack. I'm the head instructor of Krav Maga Nation based out of Philadelphia, and I am a black belt under Krav Maga instructor Alan Feldman. Um, this video is going to be real short. I just kind of want to mention something that most people in Krav Maga probably aren't even aware of, let alone people outside Krav Maga. Um, some of the basic first couple things I'm going to mention, of course, everybody knows. And it's, there are different stances. And in yellow belt and orange belt, there's some basic stances, and then that's usually what most people see. But in the old days, in the 70s and 80s, there were different stance, stances that could be used as strategy. Sometimes it's strategy, sometimes it's you know, where your hands were to begin with. So, um, when you get into yellow belt, your first day Krav Maga, um, you're going to learn two stances. So, your first stance is your natural standing position or your neutral stance. So, that is exactly how it's described. If you look at my feet, you know, neutral stance meaning one foot is not farther back than the other. And that would apply to your hands as well. But in forward outlet stance or your fighting stance is your feet shoulder width apart. If you're right handed, it's your right leg back, back heel off the ground just enough to slide a piece of paper under it. I am not close up like this but I am not really far back either. It is as if I took a step, all right? So that's why we say one step back. My hands are up, my elbows are in, my hands are open. If my left leg is forward, my hand is above my left foot. My right hand is back, not here, but out forward. So it should be touching my palm of my lead hand. My hand is not facing out like this, and it is also not closed into a fist. It is here. My thumbs are kind of aiming out. My elbows are in. Sometimes it can be tilted out slightly. We say all five fingers, um, not totally spread, but not like karate hands either. You're here. Um, this allows you to do gun defense, to do redirections, inside defenses, and at the same time, at the last minute, be able to throw out your fist. When your hands are closed, a couple different things happen. First of all, the signals that you're going to attack. You're in a fight. So your ability to de-escalate it or to just do a defensive movement only is negated by your body language. Plus, it's much harder to open your hands up once they're already closed. And it creates tension. That's why, you know, you see little kids and they're angry. They're like, Ugh. you know, there's tension there. So you can fatigue yourself being tense. This gives you much more looser movements. So that's why your hands are there. Your elbows are in. Even when you're punching, your elbows stay in. You rotate forward for your punches. Your elbows do not go out. They are not like this, and they do not go out once they are in. One thing you have a lot of people, mistakes they make coming from other martial arts and, or boxing, or sometimes when they transition from Krav Maga self-defense movements to sparring movements, once you put on a glove, is people bring their hands here to their chin. All right? This is not a good place to have your hands at all, especially in Krav Maga, is I don't have big pillows on my hands. I don't have gloves. So there's nothing protecting me here, all right? Also, if I want to do a defensive movement, I don't want to do it here. I have no room for error here. No matter how quick I am, I'm never going to be quick enough to get that. Here, I'm able to anticipate it in my first layer of defense, which is my lead hand, or at the very least, my second layer, uh, perimeter of defense, which is here. Here, they're both equal, and it's way too late. So your hand should always be here. Not here, not here, but here, relaxed. We also say your humerus is low, so that you're not, um, it's aiming straight down, so that your muscles aren't being utilized in your shoulder and fatiguing yourself. So that's your basic forward outlet stance. So you have neutral stance, your forward outlet stance. Our side outlet stance, when our attacker is onto our side, the feet stay in neutral stance, but our hands come up like so. The one hand comes forward, the other hand stays out. I am defending everything before it gets to my shoulder. So then I can throw my side kicks, I can throw my side hammer fist. That's our side outlet stance. When our attacker is behind us and we're going to throw our defensive back kicks or our offensive back kicks, we can't bring our hands out like this. But if I turn around into a punch, you know, and if my hands are kept forward, I am turning my head into a punch. So our side outlet stance is utilized when we throw kicks from behind. So that when I'm leaning forward, I can now defend it here. Those are your basic stances. Neutral stance and your forward outlet stance are taught in yellow belt. And we train our students to fight out of our dominant side and our other uh, less dominant side. 
Um, this allows us to be able to kind of start fighting or defend our attacks no matter how we end up. As Amy would always say, you can never know how you're going to end up. You have to train to be ambidextrous. Orange belt, we start to teach you side outlet stance and rear outlet stance. That's what most people find in Krav Maga. That's the most common stances, and it usually ends there. But in the old days, in the 80s and in the 70s, there were other stances that were utilized. Now, I'm just going to show you the ones that my instructor taught me. There may be an organization out there that may have one or the other, and they might even call it by something else. Um, these are stances based on strategies. Now, my forward outlet stance is here. It's not here, and it's not here. This allows me to defend inside punches or outside punches or strikes. If I want to draw the attack, and in fencing or even in Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, this would be called um, ABD, attack by drawing. I want that person to punch inwards in a straight punch so I can use my inside defenses. My hands will come farther out. He's not going to throw hook punches if my hands are out here. He's going to come through here. And as my instructor would say, you're drawing the attack, you're not giving him a gift. So don't have your hand here. Your hands are here, just bring them out here. You'll find that as beginner students, people start to do this when you're learning inside defense, and it screws up the attack because people are punching hands. So that's when I want to draw the attack to be coming down the center line so I can use my inside defenses. If I want the attack to be a wild hook punch or a tight hook punch, I will draw the attack out, so I'm bringing my hands in a straight line here. So they're obstructing each other. Not full on, but here. You're just kind of filling in this area, this space. So now he's forced to come to the outside, so your hands come out to the outside. So those are two stances based on drawing the attack. Um, I know Ellie Havix or some other instructors had different stances based on where your hands were in the progression of the attack. But these were the basic ones my instructor taught me. So neutral stance, forward outlet stance, side outlet stance, rear outlet stance, which is the same as side outlet, your inside defense stance or your outside defense stance or just your basic stance. So my name is Kevin Mack. If you have any questions, feel free to email us through our website, krabmagodnation.net or via Facebook, um, which will be Krabmagodnation or via YouTube. Thanks.